Welcome to my bathtub. This is where I once a month soak my feet before engaging in my most beloved activity in all of life, which is using my pet egg. It's actually not my bathtub, it's my parents' bathtub. I don't have a bathtub. So I come over here and I'm sitting in my bathtub, I'm soaking my feet, I'm getting my sweet little feet ready for the pet egg and I have, I have a complaint. I, th I think I need to file a complaint. This is the deal, I'm going on dates. I'm going on dates and you know, it sucks. Like we're all familiar. There's just like so much of dating already sucks but there's one ritual that I can't get over why we're still doing it. And there's gonna be uproar from both men and women on this. Paying the bill. You get a drink, you get your appetizer, you talk about where we went to school. <laughs> Shoot me. And we get the bill. And the fucking rigmarole that goes on there. Let me just say this. I don't need you or any man to pay the bill for me. And and a lot of women are gonna disagree with that. Some women are gonna agree, some disagree. I don't need you to do that. I will say personally, I'm happy to buy myself a single tequila soda. I can do it. Financially, I'm gonna be fine after this tequila soda. I can do it. I feel like it costs me more emotionally to do the dance trying to figure out Am I supposed to pay? Or do you want to pay? Is it insulting your masculinity if I don't let you pay? Uh, how long do I need to protest to decide to pay? When does it start feeling insincere? The thing is, I'm genuinely comfortable paying. I would actually rather pay. I'd rather buy us both drinks. And I've done it. I will split the bill. I will buy us both drinks. Just so I don't have to worry about you thinking I'm using you for a free drink. First of all, first of all, let me clear this up with the men. Let me clear this up with the men. This idea that women are out there like using you for a free meal or a free drink, bitch, I did not need to spend three hours getting my hair and makeup ready. A, a week texting you, talking about how my day went on the apps before we do this. This is the most time intensive meal I've ever gone through. I can make a sandwich at home. I don't need you for a free meal. That's a lie. As far as I'm concerned, that's a lie. I love eating alone. I would much rather have eaten this alone. <gasps> I'm already upset. I'm bursting all the bubbles. Come back here, bubbles. I would rather pay the bill and skip past this rigmarole, but sometimes I do pay the bill and then some guys are insulted or sometimes guys, I think, take that as meaning like you don't consider it a date or you're not interested. If you pay the bill, you're like nullifying the date or the, the worst thing is when you like tr I try to pay the bill and then, you know, we're fighting over it and eventually you're like, okay, well, how much are we going to fight over this $30 bill that I'm gonna pay $50, like not a big deal. Okay, I'll let you pay the bill. And then you're not sure if they think the offer was disingenuous. Disingenuous? What's the word? I don't know. It just feels like a game that I can't win. I've been away from dating for like two months because this, this drives me crazy. Just figuring out the bill drives me crazy enough. I couldn't do it. Went out on a date, great date, asked for the bill, and then it's just chaos. I, I think he got the bill while I was in the bathroom and I don't know if he thought that meant I was expecting him to pay. I don't expect anything. I don't expect anything. I'm trash. Listen, I'm trash. I certainly don't want you to pay the bill if you don't want to pay the bill. I just want everyone to have what they want. I'm just trying to figure out what you want. Just tell me what you want. How about this? What happened to going on walks? What happened to just like going on walks together? Can't we just go on walks? No bill. No bill involved. If we're gonna go on a date that requires someone pay the bill, Let's get our moms to do it. Let's just get your mommy and my mommy pay the bill and then we don't have to worry about it. And then no, nobody's reputation is at risk. Not yours, not mine. I don't know how to solve this problem. If I let the guy pay, then I feel like I have to like, ugh, now I have to like prove to him somehow my good intentions that I'm not trying to use him for his money. Don't get the camera wet. Hold on, hold on. Hello, please don't ruin my camera. I know a lot of women do take this as a sign, like information we're learning about the guy, but I think the guys also take it as information we're learning about the girl. And actually, I don't think that like, it's information about any of us usually. It's just like two people trying to guess what the other person expects based on maybe what somebody in the past expected, which could be totally different from what we expect. And actually, I don't have any expectations. I'm honestly a little drunk and pretty stressed about the bill and I'm tired of small talk. And I, I really would have rather that we just like went on a walk. Can we just move on? I don't know why we're still doing this as a society. Listen, dating is already a circus. I don't need this act. I don't need this one. My feet are pruning. I gotta get out of the tub. Does someone have the answer?
I'm just annoyed. I think we have to stop. No more dates. I'm running on a platform of no more dates, walks only. That's what I think. Okay, I gotta get out of here. Look away. Look away. If you're new, my name is um, Alex. If you end up liking this video, <sighs> I'm working on a script right now. I'm working on the script for this video, probably already came out. Um, the career video that I did with my sister, I'm doing with my sister. I'm working on my script. I mean, most things I don't script on YouTube. I feel like what makes YouTube special is that like, it's not a TV show, right? It's not scripted. And I feel like the human element is, it's what makes it special. That's what I like watching when I'm watching YouTube and like, there's like a very just like human real moment. That's what we all love. I try to be just very present and see what comes up. But for a video like this video, that's like a sit down chat video, a career talk video. I want to make sure that I wrap it up in the right way. So that's that's more scripted. Or at least I'll think it I'll think it through more. And like for the intro, I will usually script like the first 1 to 2 minutes very tightly. Yeah, maybe I'm saying obvious stuff, but that's what I'm working on right now. That's what I'm working on right now. But I'm also I keep just giggling to myself. I keep just giggling to myself. Cuz I had a good date. I had a good date. It was a second date. I had a good date. And I'm texting this guy, this guy from the date. I'm just such a giggly fuck. Like I just, I'm like, I can't be trusted. I can't be trusted. I can't be trusted. I hate getting excited, you know? I can't be trusted with my giggles. I just get so excited. I get excited about stuff. And then, you know, probably I ruin it. So as soon as I see myself getting excited, I immediately get depressed because I'm like, I'm just gonna disappoint myself and I need to like find a way to, con to, to, to simmer down, basically. I don't wanna talk too much about the specifics of the date or the guy or anything because you know, whatever, fucking whatever. Who, who knows if he'll even be around by the time this video comes out, but just the, just the reality of Getting excited about someone is like exhausting. It's just emotionally exhausting. Chances are, chances are like any date I go on is like not the person, right? That's, that's gonna be a minority of the dates. Most of the dates are gonna be not the person. Most of the excitement is gonna be not for the right person. So I'm just immediately like, well, what's the point of this? I can't enjoy anything. <laughs> I don't know what my point is. My point is I can't tolerate myself being happy. It's exhausting. It's exhausting. And I'm trying to write this fucking script and I just keep giggling to myself. I'm just giggling. I'm just like giggling, sitting here giggling. I feel like I'm doing a better, I think I'm doing a pretty good job of not getting ahead of myself. I'm trying to like really practice just like still learning about someone. I don't know this person. That's basically what I think when you meet someone from an app, I'm like, I don't know you. I don't know you. I don't know you. That's why I like don't, I like, I like don't ever wanna kiss anyone on a first date. I'm like, why would I kiss you? Where has your mouth been? But I think I'm doing a better job of like continuing to learn and ask questions. Sometimes I like, you know, I, I realize that like when I, when I go out with somebody, whatever, then you like decompress, at least as a girl, you like go and you decompress with your friends. I feel like this is different with girls and guys. I feel like girls go, and like they chat with their friends and they're like, this is what happened, this is what he said, and this is what I felt, and this is what it made me think of, and this is what I'm wondering. And guys, as far as I can tell, guys might like never, you might not even know that they went on a date. I don't know what guys be saying to each other, but I don't think the, I don't think the debrief is the same as a girl's debrief. And in a girl debrief, I'm always like, so I'm really wondering this, and he said this, and I'm wondering that, and what does this mean, and that was weird. And I have all these questions, but I just never ask him the question. I never ask him the question. 
And so I'm trying to do that more. I'm, I'm just being like, what did you mean? What did you mean when you said this? Why did you do that? That was confusing to me. And they're not even like stuff about me. It's just like, oh. I'm not saying anything. Okay, now I'm gonna tell a joke because I do not like being upset. Here's a joke. Let's Google a fun joke. I'm gonna Google a fun joke. A fun joke to tell. A fun joke to tell. A fun joke to tell. Here's a good one. Why, why couldn't the pony sing a lullaby? Because she was a little horse. I think I need to work more. Okay, okay. The straightener that I use more frequently will stay here for easy action. But it's just like a thing like that where I'm like, hey, I can do this super easily and enjoy it. And my day is going fine, but I have spent like, I spent like three days looking for my ped egg and I can't find it. And it's like ruining, it's ruining my whole mood. Commenteremo i metodi high tech che hanno permesso di risalire noise there's construction they've decided to do construction in the apartment downstairs which is pretty annoying because i'm trying to focus on texting right now i'm trying to focus on texting and it it takes it takes everything out of me it doesn't even matter if i'm texting you know i'm texting a cute guy but it could be texting texting my dog walker don't have one don't have a dog even that stresses me out there's something about something happens when i try and com communicate i and i enjoy writing as well writing for videos but Speaking as myself in a text to a human, there's like this, something happens. My entire personality disappears. The amount of like mental trickery I have to do to myself in order to get a text out, I literally have to be like, what, what would you, what would Caroline say? What would Caroline say? What, what would you say if it was you? If it was you taping, what would you say? Something happens to me over text. First of all, you're not going to like me over text. You're not going to like me. I'm intolerable. Intolerable. I'm just sitting here focusing on my texting, eating my granolas, please. Speaking of which, ooh, watch this. This is going to be cool. Watch this. This is going to be cool. This video is brought to you by Thrive Market, and I think that was a pretty cool transition. If you don't know about Thrive Market, where you been? Thrive Market is an online membership-based grocery store. Yeah, but what's their mission, Caroline? Well, I'm so glad you asked. I'm gonna tell you. Their mission is to make healthy living easy and accessible no matter where you are with guaranteed savings on every order. A lot of the products I started ordering from Thrive Market were things I already loved, like Lara Bars. Very good. This is one of my go-to on the run. I gotta scamper out the door snack bars. Uh, but they're just cheaper on Thrive Market. If you find a lower price somewhere else, you won't, but Thrive Market will match it, and um, orders over 49 bucks ship free. So I, I will be snacking, but I'd like to know that it's like ingredients that are good for me. And the whole thing with Thrive Market, it's like it's good for you, it's good for the planet. All of their orders are delivered with carbon neutral shipping from a zero waste warehouse. It's just like good, good, good. And the most important thing to me is that it's just like every single order is the highest quality ingredients with organic and sustainable products. Can you not? And you save on every order. I think I saved, let me look at my, let me look at my computer. I saved 20 bucks on my last order. Brag. But like in all seriousness, I'm a fan of Thrive Market because you know, we all want to promote healthy living and such, but that is truly literally inaccessible for a lot of people. If you're living somewhere that's not near like a health grocery store, then I guess sucks for you. It's not an available asset for everyone. They also have like a really nice policy where for every paid annual membership, they will donate a membership to someone in need. It's good for the community. It's good for your body. It's good for the planet. It's a win, 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 triple win. They am always trying out new gluten-free things. Even though I'm not gluten-free, two of my siblings are. Simple Mills, best gluten-free brand you're ever gonna try. I love their cookies, love their snacks. Organic Rice crispy Treat from Annie's. And then my granolas. I've really been curating my granola collection, and I think that is cool. If you guys wanna try Thrive Market, 
You can join today and get 30% off of your first order plus a free gift up to 60 bucks. There's a link, duh, I would never show up here without a link. Thrivemarket.com slash Caroline Winkler. I think you're gonna love it. They've been very good to me. They've been very good to me. They are not helping me solve the riddle of my texting disability, but I'll forgive it. The amount, the amount of years I'm losing on my life trying to figure out what I'm supposed to text. I don't have the same, I don't have the same issue in person. I don't have the same issue in conversation. I think it's something about seeing my own thoughts written out that I'm like, ooh, that was your thought? Wolf. But if you're a cute guy, I'll get it together. You know what I don't like doing them? I do not like, I refuse to text a bunch before meeting someone for the first time. Like if you're meeting off an app, I was on freaking OkCupid years ago in college because I went to theater school and everyone was gay. So if you wanted to meet a man, it wasn't at school. I was on OkCupid and I matched with this guy and we texted for like two weeks before we met up and the connection was amazing. And then we met in person and I was just like, Pleh. you know, it, like online personality can be so different from in-person personality. So I really don't like to text someone before we meet and I'll tell them that. I'll just be like, I'm not a shan't be. Shan't be catching me texting you before we meet. After that, I'll be a slave to my phone, fine. Yeah, that was a disappointing incident in college. It really scarred me. I was like, ooh, never again. Okay, I have to go do something with my life. I have some, I have some home updates to share. Some home decor updates. Yeah, I feel like I've just been bopping around so fast in videos, I haven't had time to share them. We're gonna share them, but first, I'm doing my homework. I'm doing my homework, I'm studying. I signed up for an Italian class and I'm freaking having a blast. I think it's the first time that I've been in a classroom voluntarily, you know, like since since college or whatever, just I'm there because I want to be there. It's so different being in a classroom. It's so comforting. Like, you know, it's just like this safe, cozy space. We just have to be here and just like do the thing. Just like listen to the lesson and then that's it. It's like, it's so comforting. I love it. I'm having a blast. Everyone's really nice. I used to speak Italian pretty well. I, I used to be like pretty fluent from when I was in au pair living there, but I have like no reason to use it since and now it's pretty bad. So I'm trying to be disciplined about doing my homework. It's also, it's kind of nice to do first thing in the morning. I have a bad habit. I think a lot of people do this of just like going immediately to work, going immediately onto the computer like as soon as I get out of bed. And that just doesn't feel good. And it left me feeling like, okay, what are little things I can incorporate into every week, even a work week, even a work day to make it feel more livable. So I'm like trying to go on more walks I'm like doing little meditations. I'm doing like I'm stretching in the morning or like sitting down and doing my stupid exercises, although it's afternoon now, so I'm late. Oh well. But you know, progress, not perfection. Okay, moving on. Let's go. Let's go look at some home decor. One thing I did that I'm so happy about and it took me forever to do was to get this credenza mounted. This is just from IKEA. I love it. I love having like a more modern piece in this traditional space. I'm overheating. But I did not trust myself to mount it. It just like wasn't worth the stress. So I just used a task rabbit and they came and did it. And I would say they did like a B plus job. Solid B plus. Is it a little crooked? Yeah. Yeah, it is. Yeah, I'm very happy with it. So different having it up off the floor. Yeah, so it's actually up off the floor. To me, it makes such a difference. I'm still always changing the styling up here. I don't feel like I found. Is the camera so crooked? How Does that annoy you guys or does it just annoy me? Yeah, I'm always changing the styling up here. I don't think I've aced it yet. Oh, speaking of styling, here's a styling question that I've wanted to address for a while. So if you've watched my, uh, this is why your home is a mess, like organization video is a pretty popular video. One of the tips I shared is, is that if you're trying to solve the problem of visual clutter and things are just looking visually busy, visually busy, one of the things you can do is try to group items into groups of three. You know, we've got like, boom, 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 one, two, three, and they kind of become a little group over here instead of just like eight items spread out. Like doing groups of three can help simplify visual clutter a little bit. 
a lot of people have taken that tip and then looked around and said, why are there only two items there? Why is there only one item? You have four items there. I thought you said they need to be in group of three. Everyone take a breath. Let me clarify the point. First of all, there's no rules. I don't know how else to say that. I don't think there's any rules. Someone saying there's rules is just, I don't, I think it's ridiculous. Do whatever you want. You're, you're not allowed to have, you're not allowed to have two bases next to each other. You are, you are. So it's not that you can't. There are a million ways to style. The tip was that if you're feeling like, oh, there's too many cluttered things, it's feeling busy, but you want to keep all the stuff there, then try grouping in groups of threes, okay? Have we cleared it up? People were getting fiery about it. They're like, you're, you, you lied. <laughs> I will say I'm very much enjoying the living room. It's so nice in spring, the bright light, like this is it. This is all that matters to me. Ooh, on, on like a, the painting Q and A I did, I asked people to guess, I do want to paint this room. I wanted to paint it for a while. I'm not technically allowed to, but I'm going to just ask my landlord and see what he says. Worst he can say it's no. I asked people to guess if they could guess what color they think I'm going to paint it. I don't think anybody guessed it. People had the right sensibility about it, but no one guessed the actual color. Oh wait, okay, let's go to the, let's go to the kitchen. There's something in the kitchen. I got this little kitchen rug. I love this rug. I really love it. It's a little big. It's a little big for the space. Can you see it? I'm just on the floor. This is really good quality. It's from Rejuvenation. I'll link the rug. I do love the rug. It's maybe a little too big, but also, I'm fine with it. I think it was one of those things that I was like, oh, it's not picture perfect. It's not picture perfect for like an Instagram post. It, sh it looks like it should just proportion be a little smaller. And I was gonna like get rid of it, but then just using it in my kitchen, like it doesn't bother me. I think it's, it, it was one of those moments where I was like, oh, this is like lovely and livable. And I would keep this if I didn't have like an Instagram and a YouTube channel. Like it was a silly thing. I do like it. I do like it. died while doing that. I think I like it a lot. I think I really like it a lot. Yeah, I was just getting sick of all the florals in here. Yeah, I think this is my new evolution. Can you even see? Can you see the colors appropriately? I think it's wool and jute, jute, jute. Um, I was worried if it would be like too scratchy for a living room, but they were showing it in the living room. It's from Lulu in Georgia. And because it's not 100% jute, I thought it was worth trying. I feel very happy with it. It doesn't feel like weird, judy, scratchy, like it's jute, but I'm not unhappy to sit on it or walk on it with bare feet. I think I do need a rug pad though. I need a rug pad. Okay. Well, I'm pretty happy. <laughs> it's always shocking. Never know which decision is going to be like the worst decision. Auto focusing. I don't know. Oh my God, Luke! Some of them are so pretty. Luke! This one's Wait, I gotta move the camera. Can you pick one up? Oh my God! Look at these freaking bespoke honey jars. Okay, let's chat. I'm dying. I'm dying. It's so good. Let me in. Are you coming in? Let me in. Okay. Okay. This is my brother Luke. Hey. Everyone's in love with him, as they should be. Oh. Let's wait. Should I, tell, should I let them know that you're single? I am single. They're always asking. Yes. Yes, he's single. <laughs> let me take it back. Some of you guys know the backstory, some of you do not. A couple months ago, I was working on a kitchen makeover for my apartment, and I was really intent on getting all these sweet decorative accessories that are functional. I love an accessory that is functional and I'm literally going to use every day, but also looks beautiful and I'm happy to have out. It just like elevates everything. And for some reason, I became really set on getting a like 
sculpturesque honeypot. And I did a lot of searching and I found that really it doesn't exist unless it's in the shape of like a beehive or like a bear or something that was kind of cutesy. Yeah. Or I didn't want a thematic honeypot. I just wanted something like elevated, minimal, modern, and sculpturally beautiful that I love to have out. Doesn't exist. Uh. So basically when I, I knew who to turn to when I wanted to I wanted the world to give me a bespoke honeypot, no. and I wasn't gonna do it. <laughs> uh, I went to art school. I studied at uh, University of Delaware, got my BFA, um, concentrated in sculpture. And then, yeah, when you brought that up to me about like the honeypots, I was like, oh, that's fun. So he made me a freaking honeypot. <laughs> this is the very first honeypot he made me. This one we showed in a video, and this is made of mahogany. Mm -hmm. And this is the earliest prototype. We tested it out, shared it on the channel, and there was so much interest in it. So we have been working on, mostly Luke has been working on, <laughs> making the honey pots, refining the design, making it functionally beautiful. But basically, if you have been craving one of these honey pots, which I get DMs about it every week, <laughs> the honey pots are available for you. <laughs> We're gonna link Luke's Etsy shop. There's a very limited supply because each of these just takes so much manual labor, but it's a really special thing. I think we have, what, 50? Mm -hmm. There's 50 of these guys. Um, if you're not interested in this at all, you click forward to the video, but I'm gonna talk about the honeypots a little bit. Luke has done all of the manual labor, all of the work. Like I came up with the design and then we even refined the design a bit together. Things we've changed from the original design. I wanted a more streamlined um, glass that had a more modern profile. So we landed on this guy, completely streamlined and modern. Um, we also have another shorter, stouter guy, if you like a stout boy. <laughs> How do you beautiful. feel? This has, been a, this has been a long honey journey for us. It, Experimenting, prototyping, yeah. you figuring out this whole labor process. I think it's something I really like to do is figuring things out. Like that lengthy process. I yeah. don't know why. Like as soon as you- rewarding. So rewarding. Yeah, that is the thing that you're uniquely good at is problem solving and that's what a lot of design okay. is. Design in your space is not just about like picking out pillow patterns and covers and wall paint. It's figuring out the problem solving of how to make a space support your life so that your life is easier. Where to make stuff accessible. How to help your kids get their own toys out without you having to intervene all the time. So much of design is functionality and I love that sol problem solving part of it and that is very much your skill set and oh, so nice. much of that went into this. It took me a while to figure out the process, but now that I have like the process down, I think I can like pretty consistently get like a pretty sweet, perfectly spherical. It's like the most satisfying thing I've ever looked at. It's really fun. So with walnut, it's kind of like a fuzzy carpet. You can like rub your hand across it and, it'll, and all, the, all the frays will go this way and it'll have like a different light pattern. So it's got this like fuzz to it, which makes it hard to sand. And sometimes you'll get these little hitting spots, it becomes hard, like really challenging to get a really smooth finish. And look at the finished product. This is so insane. It's like marble. It's cute. Look at that. Look at that perfect finish. That's like the most beautiful thing I've ever seen. That's actually where most of the manual hands-on work comes into is the sanding and finishing right. because of the pitting. Right. I think it sounds like it was all my fault that it was so much extra labor because I made you switch to walnut. It's okay, it's walnut's fault. This one's one of my favorites. This one's really pretty. Stink on camera. Wow, it's gorgeous. And it's all finished with what? Food safe? Oh, yeah, food safe, of course. Um, I actually use a honey wax to finish these. Girl, Isn't that get hilarious? out of town. Yeah, it's honey. It's made it's of honey. honey. How hilarious. They're exactly. honeys, they're truly honeys. They're made of honeys, they're for honeys, and they're honeys. These are sitting in my kitchen and I put different honeys in them. Stylistically, I like to fill them up only about like halfway or so, maybe more than this one needs to be refilled. Kind of the same as how I like to fill water in my flower vases, about halfway so you get to see some of the stem, you get to see the light shining through. I like to set them up at the window so that like, light shines through, light shines through the honey. It's just beautiful. And I'm using it all the time. I'm drinking way more tea <laughs> now that like the honey is alluring and beautiful. It's kind of like if I put my cute duster out, I dust more often. Oh, yeah. These are the hacks. So oh, if you're, like if you're trying to up your honey, honey consumption. Yeah, there you go. Because of the manual labor required in this that I, that I put him through, this is probably a limited time product, at least for now, yeah. um, you made 50 of these. Mm -hmm. They're gonna go up on an Etsy store that we're gonna link and share, Luke's Etsy store. Etsy shop is called Coda Craft. Mm -hmm. if, you know, if you know about Coda, if you know, you know. <laughs> um, yeah, he's sweet. He's sweet. 
Look at it. <laughs> it's so cute. It matches her hair perfectly. So you got, okay. Thanks guys. Oh. Che ore sono lì? Quante due ore? Eh, Caroline, dove vai se vuoi comprare il pane? Vado dal panettiere. Vai, vado dal panettiere, esatto. Vado dal fuori. I know programmatore is Latin. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Too deep, too deep. I see your face very raw, right? Oh, <laughs> oh, no. Okay, okay. Okay. Vabbè. Si dice è casalinga o fa casalinga? È casalinga. Is... Nessun pronome. No. E casalinga. No, e casalinga è perfetto. Ok. Allora, acquaiolo. Sì, acqua. Yeah, esatto. <laughs> Something easy, don't worry. No? You like <laughs> the panic. <laughs> the panic on <laughs> your face. Like, I don't know. Uh, what about you? Che cosa? Quando ero giovane. Yeah, più, 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 più giovane. Più, sì. Uh, volevo, mm -hmm. sognavo di essere attrice. Sì. Uh, ho anche un, un madre. 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 Oh, okay. Sì. Wow, ok. Quindi attrice o...